want to be able to use an Android device with a free application from FireTech to create your script, load your script into your FireTech modules, and control your fireworks show, you can do that with the FT Control app. What I have here is a relatively inexpensive Kindle Fire with the FT Control app from FireTech loaded into it, as well as the ES File Explorer. Now the FT Control app um, is this application right here, and you'll see it has some similar indications here in terms of blue and green buttons to advance through the system, very similar to what you see on the modules and on the remote. And up top here it has a number of filters. I want to point out here first some of these filters. It says Custom 1, Custom 2, and Custom 3. I pointed out in the very brief and basic video on CSV files for the FireTech system that there are these three custom uh, columns. Now I have a CSV file already loaded into this tablet for this video. And what I want to show you here, this is the same headings that we went through in the basic video. We've got ID for the modules. We've got two modules in this script. The rails, this is rails 1 through 4 on the modules. The channel is the queues, queues 1 through 12 for each of the rails. The firing time here in milliseconds. Sequence, now we're going to leave sequences 0. I will have another video going through sequences. Value and duration are for DMX. Now we're not doing DMX here, this is just a pyro script. But these these three columns here, this is what was custom one, custom two, and custom three. Now I've gone ahead and created headings here, effects, directions, and location, and added some information here. Fountains, mines, I think I have shells in here, up and down, left, center, right. Um, and this file's saved in the tablet here. So if we go back to the FT control app, on the upper left corner here, we can load the script. And we do that through the ES File Explorer. And I have that here under Documents and this FT Control uh, Pyro script. Now, here on, it asks me how I want to load this. I've always picked the normal Android way, which works just fine. It identifies that there are two modules, one and two, so we'll select all and hit OK. And the script is loaded up into the application. And you'll notice up here, for effects, directions, and location, we have those custom filters that were pulled in from our script. So I could, for example, go to location here, and I could filter out events from left, center, or right direction, up and down, effects. I got fountains, mines, and shells here in this script. Oh. Now, we want to load this app into the modules. So one of the things you need, we've got the USB A to B cable. We've already plugged it into this module here, which we're going to set this as a master module. You need to pick up this on-the-go cable or OTG cable. Uh, this allows you to connect that into your Android device. Now I'll turn this on, hold down the green button to bring this into master mode. I'll give this now ID 1 and it's gone into master mode here. And it is asking me, do I want to allow the, this application to access the USB device? Yes. And it'll say USB ready down here. Now, I'm gonna show you something here first. If we go ahead and in the upper right corner here, once we're in test, 
hit script load. We're going to load the script. Well, it's gone 52% and it says device 2 did not respond. Well, that's because I didn't turn on this one here. So, do you want to continue with the next device? I'm going to hit no here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the second module here. And once it starts up with the blue button, we're going to advance it to ID2 and then the green button, hit OK. We are going to go back here. On the bottom here, it says on this blue button, add slaves. We're in test mode. If we select the blue button, it's going to go back into that next state of add slaves. So on this module here now, it says it has one slave added. This module is identified as O2S, S for slave. Now in this add slave state, I want to show you if I try to load the script, I, I can't load the script. I need to go to test mode. The green button here says test. That's an indication if you press the green button what state it'll go into next. So now I'm in the test mode here. Now we'll load the scripts. And it's loaded all 48. And I can see that on both of these modules here. They say PRG, PRG for program. I'm showing V's here on the screen for both rail 1 and rail 2, and that aligns with the script. The script is fully loaded for two rails on both modules. And the green button here is telling me if I press it again, I will go into ARM. ARM takes a, rather than just a quick tap, it's a long hold, just like on the modules. We're now in the ARM state. It's telling me that if I hit it again, it'll go to play. That just takes a quick press. We've gone into play. You can see the clock here starting. The modules have gone into play. And the rails are showing the integrated LEDs firing up above. Let me turn off the lights so you can see that better. So the show is stopped here, it's still playing, so you can, either one of these buttons here will bring it back to pause, um, going back to test, take it out of ARM. A couple things I want to point out on this version of the FT Control app is that uh, if you do play it, um, and uh, you see the counter on the modules here, we're at 6, 7, 8, Nine. It's keeping sync with this app. If you hit pause right now, the app will go back to zero. The modules have are at 13. If I hit play, um, the clock here starts back at zero. The script continues where it left off, though. And you can see that on the modules, we're at 21, 22, 23. So th that's one thing that we've noticed here. In order to erase the script from the modules used in the FT control app, you need to have a script loaded into the application. And you can hit or script erase, hit OK, and it'll remove the script from the modules. You no, no longer have the PRG on any either one of these modules here. You also need to make sure that you've selected all the IDs. I've noticed that if if for some reason we were to only have filtered out ID one and remove the script. It would only remove it from ID1. But there's a brief overview of the FT Control app. I'll try to do a, another video of this showing some of the filtering. Also, I'll just point out this uh, screen here is the sequence filter, where in those columns in the script you can identify sequences and control individual sequences. And we'll have a video coming up on that here soon. I hope you found this helpful.